Good morning. All right, let's clear the table. Wait, what is this? Do not remove. Why? Hmm. Okay. Ah, it's kind of sticky. <laughs> What we are going to do today is build in a MOSFET and it's not a regular MOSFET, it's a MOSFET from Xortech. I got this thing from Jeff Lee who was kind enough to provide me two of these things at the IWA 2080. To just build in a MOSFET wouldn't be that funny, so we are going to stress test this thing. We are using an email land arms gearbox with a built-in M170 motor, dual sector gear and M160 spring. First of all, we are going to test this with a regular self-made MOSFET. Actually, this is an 11-point volt LiPo battery. To test this, I have to lift the cutoff. The full auto selector plate is built in to make this thing semi-auto only. In Germany we are restricted by law to shoot semi-auto only if we are going above 230 fps or roughly 0.5 joules. We are now going to use a 7.4 LiPo battery. To be honest the biggest one I could find. It has a capacity of 5000 mA and a discharge rate of 30C. By the way with this setting the gun will shoot roughly about Hmm, funny. Roughly about 1.6 joules. That's 415 FPS or 126 meters per second. At the IWA I've seen a build where the complete MOSFET module goes into the gearbox like this. I was very excited about this and um, tried to recreate it, but I wasn't able to do it. As you can see here, it's impossible to fit this thing into an ENL gearbox version 2, but I just did a regular MOSFET build and front wired this thing. At first, we are testing with a 7.4 volt LiPo battery, again, the 5000 milliamps thing, you know, secured with a shrinking tube which comes with the MOSFET itself. Okay, let's try it. The biggest question for German market is, will this thing resist rapid semi-auto fire? Right now it's not even hot. We were actually able to jam this thing, but okay in 160 spring. It's heating up a little bit, but to be honest, it's like hand warm. The cables are actually getting hotter than the MOSFET itself. And I think we gonna add an 11 point volt LiPo battery now. Let the fun begin. Okay, I added an 11 point volt LiPo battery. It's not the strongest one, but it will bring the voltage we need. Mm -hmm. You may not hear it, but I can feel it. It shoots quite fast now. The MOSFET is just a little bit warm. Nothing to worry about. Again, the cables are the most heated up parts. The MOSFET, it's just hand warm again. The LiPo battery, not even warm at all. I just think we do need to shoot more. <laughs> to 
to be honest, I was quite skeptical about this very, very, very little MOSFET. But well... Alright, this is getting boring, so I promised you a stress test and I gonna break this MOSFET or I gonna break this gearbox. So we are going full auto again. These were about 10, 11 seconds of very, very fast full auto. Just nothing got really warm at all. The gearbox is still working fine. And that means we are going full auto again. Okay, now we did kill something and it's the piston, I guess. The MOSFET is still working fine. Okay. So, I would say stress test passed. This thing, this very, very little MOSFET, endures 11 point volt LiPo batteries with dual sector gear 160 spring on more than 10 seconds of full auto with a very, very strong high torque motor. The MOSFET is not even really warm. And the only thing I'm interested in is how the fuck do I build this into my gearbox directly. And maybe I'm gonna ask Mr. Jeff Lee about this. Thank you very much for providing me these two MOSFETs. I wasn't even able to break one of them. What I actually was able to break is a piston. This was a Mad Bull piston with full steel teeth, which completely got out of the piston. I could get it out of this quick change system for the spring. And the piston looks quite shattered and wrecked. I just think in normal use, this MOSFET will endure likely everything. Or let's say it will endure a lot until you break your gearbox. Thanks for watching, do all the subscribing stuff and you know, yeah, okay, just do whatever you want. Right after this I tried to find out what went wrong and I got out the motor and the motor actually is the thing which caught the most heat. But well, these things have a running temperature about 80 degrees Celsius, so that's not too bad and it's made for an M170 spring and I just have an M160 spring with dual sector gear built in so it's not even fully compressed. Yeah, I kinda like ENL motors. Bye, have a very good time.